His weapon was far too large to rightfully be called a sword. It was larger, thicker, heavier, and cruder than any normal blade. By all accounts, it was no more than a hulking mass of iron. Hi. Today I'm going to tell you how I managed to turn essentially a pile of children's craft supplies into this. The Dragon Slayer from Berserk. Okay, this is heavy. Okay. So, I've got a lot of tools here in my shop, and normally when I do a build, I realize that the strategies and the advice that I give aren't always super relevant to everybody because, well, not everybody has a bunch of tools in their shop. So today I wanted to do something totally different and build something using the simplest set of tools I possibly could. Stuff that anybody might have lying around the house. So if anybody out there is as crazy as I am and wants to follow along at home and build one of these things themselves, they actually can. Plus, I've linked a Google Doc down below with all the relevant measurements and dimensions, so it should be pretty much set. I modeled this thing using Guts himself as a kind of measuring stick. The official Berserk guidebook puts his height at 6 foot 8, and that seems ridiculous, but who am I to argue? That's about 6 inches taller than me, and I wanted the sword to look the same in my hands as it does in Guts's. Guts? Guts's? I think Guts's. Guts's. So I decided to scale the whole thing down about 10%. I chose cardboard as the primary building material just because it's cheap, widely available, and easy to work with. And light, which, given the size of this thing, is important. I measured and cut out a bunch of varying sized pieces of cardboard that I could stack up and turn into kind of a graduated, angled sword blade. I used a drywall square here, but you just need a long straight edge. Piece of wood, metal, honestly whatever you got is gonna work fine. Only problem was, the sword is close to 7 feet long and the biggest cardboard sheets that I can find are only 5 feet, so I just had to tape a few together to get to that final length. The initial plan was to space a new piece of cardboard every eighth of an inch, which looked great on the 3D model, but in real life it ended up way too chunky, so I just decided to ditch every second piece and it actually turned out great. And then, once I had all my pieces laid out, I just used a hot glue gun to join them all together. Okay, next thing to figure out was the handle. I wanted to be able to actually swing the thing around, which meant I needed a strong connection between the blade and the handle. I decided to pick up a one inch dowel from the hardware store, and then I cut a slit down the blade's center all the way through, the same width as the thickness of the dowel. Then I just used more hot glue to attach everything. When attaching the dowel, I cut through every layer of cardboard except for the top one on either side because I wanted to be able to cover it up at the end of the day. As soon as that handle got attached, it became so hard to not just swing it around. Okay, quick confession. I'd never actually seen Berserk before starting this build. Little bits and pieces, but I'd never actually consumed it in its entirety. I didn't want to be some kind of phony, so I decided to read through the manga as I was building the sword, and um... This is the live audio from me experiencing the eclipse. No! Oh my god, what the f***? My boys! No! Oh my god! Uh. Berserk fans, I finally understand your pain. I'm one of you now. Anyway, moving right along. Next, the blade has kind of a hilt at its base, so I cut out a few semicircles and glued them on. After taking a second look, I realized I'd kind of misinterpreted the layering of the details, so I peeled that top layer off and then tried again to much better results. There was a little bit more detail work to do around the base of the hilt, and you would think that as a grown adult, it'd be pretty easy to use a hot glue gun for a project like this and not burn yourself every 10 seconds. You'd think. Okay, I know that the Dragon Slayer is pretty often shown with this little bit of chain sticking out of the hilt, but like half the time it's not even there, so I decided to skip it. The last structural piece was the pommel stone, and I decided to just stick to my guns and make it out of cardboard. I figured it'd be easiest to build it up layer by layer, just measuring and gluing as I went along. And honestly, it worked great. Just had to cut a little hole in the center and then glue it onto the handle. And just like that, I had the structure of the sword, but it still 
very much looked like cardboard. So I brought out my secret weapon. Pre-mixed drywall compound. The stuff is cheap, easy to use, and you can get it anywhere. The plan was to use it to fill in the gaps between the layers and just smooth everything out. And to fill in those open corrugated edges and make everything look solid. Here was the process. Step one, apply a coat as smooth as possible across the entire sword's body. The edges are obvious, but if you look closely, corrugated cardboard has kind of a subtle wavy texture to it, so even the flat surfaces had to get filled. Step two, let it dry for a day or so and see how it looks. Cardboard is obviously made of paper, which when it gets wet, it tends to warp and bend and move a little bit, which isn't a huge problem. It just means that more coats are in order. Step three, the compound doesn't go on perfectly smooth, so each coat has to get pretty thoroughly sanded once it dries. Step four, repeat. The process gets done over and over again until you're happy. There's always gonna be imperfections. I think I probably could have done this forever and never been 100% satisfied with the result. But the nice thing about the Dragon Slayer is that it's almost always shown with imperfections. There's dings and nicks, and at the end of the day, it actually kind of turned out perfect. Now that the shape was done, it was time to deal with the color. First things first, I just hit it with a few coats of primer to make everything nice and uniform. I had never really tried to make something non-metal look metallic before, and in my research, I discovered graphite powder. Apparently, it's a really easy way to make things look like metal, and prop makers use it all the time. I had never used it before, but a huge container was super cheap on Amazon, so I figured, why not give it a shot? The prep for the graphite powder had to happen in a few steps because the different parts of the blade are different colors. First up was those lighter edges, so I hit the whole thing with some white gloss spray paint. Then it was onto the face. And there was an interesting challenge here, because the color is one thing, but the Dragon Slayer is almost always described in the same way. Not so much a sword as a raw heap of iron. I had to find a way to replicate that rough, almost bubbling texture. And after racking my brain, I settled on a solution. Odds are pretty good that if you're inside right now and you look up at your ceiling, you'll see this rough kind of random texture. That's done to disguise any inconsistencies in the drywalling, but it actually looks pretty close to what I had in mind. So I taped off the sword's edges and all the places that I wanted to keep nice and smooth. And then I bought a can of textured drywall spray and gave it a little bit of a test run. And I thought it looked pretty good. So what the heck? After the texture had dried with the tape still in place, I hit the whole thing with some black spray paint and I was so happy with it. Okay, it was finally time for the graphite powder. From what I'd seen, you just take a cloth or a buffing pad and rub it on and I was immediately met with very mixed results. It honestly looked so good. It doesn't 100% pop on camera, but in the spots where it worked, it looked crazy convincing. That's in the spots it worked, though. I'm not exactly sure why, but any kind of inconsistency in the sword's surface resulted in these horrible, ugly blotches. I thought maybe it was a little leftover adhesive from the tape, so I gave things a little sand and tried again. It was better, but definitely not the end result I was looking for. I really liked the look, though, so I'm definitely gonna experiment more with it down the line. I think maybe with the drywall mud and the corrugated edges, I think there's just too much inconsistency for the graphite powder to really work. Word of warning about the graphite powder, though, the stuff is an absolute mess. I'm lucky in that I have a work surface I can just sand down, but I'll be honest, that sanding process gave me uh, a lot of time to ruminate on next steps. Speaking of next steps, since plan A didn't work, I decided to just keep things simple. I taped off all the black sections and then just covered up the graphite powder with some good old-fashioned Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint. I don't know if that shiny kind of faux metallic base layer helped at all, but I was actually really happy with the results. So much so that I picked up another slightly darker color and used it on the hilt and the pommel stuff. The last step was to wrap the handle. With wrappings like this, I usually just use hockey tape. It's easy to put on or take off if you happen to make a mistake, and it actually looks way less modern and artificial than you think it would, especially once you get a little bit dirty. My sophisticated technique here was literally to drag my hands around on the floor of my shop until they were sufficiently dirty and then give the handle a little fondle. <laughs> and with that, it was finally done. One man's dream can hold dominion over the entire world. 
for one who dedicates his life to the forging of a single sword. While many can pursue their dreams in solitude, other dreams are like great storms blowing hundreds, even thousands of dreams apart in their wake. Dreams breathe life into men and can cage them in suffering. Yeah. <laughs>